Hello grade 11, welcome to Earth and Life Science. So before we start our discussion, I want you to ask this question. Is this possible? So we have here a cow giving birth into a chicken. Is this possible? Yes or no? Okay, so I think you have your own idea about this one. You have your own answers about this one. Take note that Organisms are not immortal. So who will make sure that they will still exist in nature after they die? A simple and efficient system in us makes sure that the species will be perpetuated, that this continue to nature even after we die. I am referring to the reproductive system. It makes sure to the continuation of all species. So where do we begin? That's why we need to first understand the process of reproduction. From the word re means again, production which means making or simply making something again. Reproduction is the process by which animals produce offspring for the purpose of continuing the species. So that one is reproduction. So our lesson for today is all about the reproduction of representative animals. And we have here our learning competency. In this lesson, you will be able to describe the different ways and how representative animals reproduce. We are products of billions of years worth of evolution. And we know this much thanks to reproduction. Through reproduction, nature has selected organisms that have a gene pool that is capable of surviving and thriving. Animals have both adapted and evolved to better fit their environment thanks to that variation. While us, humans, have goals in life. Some animals were born to reproduce and die immediately after. So now, you, uh, so now you ask, why is reproducing offspring so important to animals? This is one of the questions that we will be answering later on. This lesson, we will understand key concepts about complexities of reproduction in animals and synthesize our learning at the end. Lastly, the lesson will also allow you to appreciate the true importance of why a continuity of a species is important. So our lesson is all about reproduction of animals. Take note, we have here two types of reproduction. We have here asexual and sexual reproduction. In our previous discussion, asexual reproduction, a parent organism will not need a mate or partner for it to produce its own offspring. The offspring of a sexual organism are an exact copy or same copy of its parent organism. While in sexual reproduction, it needs two parents, a male and a female, in order to reproduce. Okay, so take note of that too. First, let us start with this one. We have here a diagram. Reproduction is divided into two, the asexual and sexual reproduction. Under asexual re reproduction, we have here different types. We have here the fission, fragmentation, and the budding. While under the sexual, we have here external fertilization and internal fertilization. In the internal fertilization, we have here its types, oviparous, viviparous, and ovoviviparous. So this one is the diagram for reproduction in animal or animal reproduction. First, let us start on the first type of reproduction. We have here the asexual reproduction. Organisms are diverse, unique and have equally unique features that help them survive in their environment. These features tailors to the animal's environment size, habitat, and so many more factors. One unique feature is the way 
these organisms undergo fertilization. So, dito sa asexual reproduction, a single parent produce offspring. So, it only need a single parent. Does not need sex cell. Does not need a egg cell or sperm cell in order to reproduce. And the product is identical. Take note, you don't need a partner in a sexual reproduction. You can uh, produce even though there is only one single parent. Advantage and disadvantage of a sexual reproduction. Advantage, short time, less energy. Short time in the sense that it does not need to find a mate in order to reproduce. You can reproduce at any time in a short time. Okay, and since short time, you will be needing only less energy. So faster than sexual reproduction. Disadvantage lacks genetic variation. So it has less surviving chance due to lack of genetic variation. Since there is only one parent, meron siyang lack of genetic variation. Population is more likely to catch disease at the same time. So that is the advantage and disadvantage of a sexual reproduction. So we have here the types. First is the binary fission. A binary fission occurs in single-celled organisms. It is when a parent cell divides itself into two equal parts and create an offspring. So, for example, is this one from a single and it is divided into two equal parts and create an offspring. So, uh, no parent remains. Two daughter cells grow to normal size. So, for example, if this one is the parent cell, this one is divided into two. So, you will just remove this one. So, we have here two, do do two daughter cells grow to normal size, but there will be no parent to remain. So, in binary fusion, uh, it occurs in bacteria, protozoa, and also in algae. So, that one is binary fusion. Another one, exact copy through mitosis. So, the parent cell is the exact copy of the two daughter cells being formed. Uh, types, we have here regular, longitudinal, and transverse, binary fusions. So, this type of reproduction is like cloning. Uh, to easily remember and understand the reproduction process of binary fusion, it is valuable to remember what the terms mean. The word binary means something having two parts. The new daughter bacteria. So that one is the two parts, two daughter bacteria. Well, the word fission means the movement of splitting, the dividing of two equal parts. So division of two equal parts, that is binary fission. Other examples of binary fissions are this. We have amoeba, trypanosome, flagellate, paramecia. So as you can see, from one parent cell divided into equal parts, forming the two new daughter cells. Next type, we have here budding. Budding happens when a parent organism grows a bud attached to its body. When the bud is developed, it will detach itself from the parent and form a new organism. Examples are the yeast and jellyfish. So daughter cells forms from outgrowth or bud of parent. The, or, the new organism remains attached as it grows, separating from parent organism only when it is Mature. So, for example, is this one. Okay, so this one is an example. Uh, there is a bud, then it is separated 
then form into a replicate of the parent cell. So that one is budding. Okay, buds may break off or remain attached and form a colony. So examples again are hydra and yeast, and also we have here jellyfish. So this one is a, a clearer explanation of budding. So we have here a bud. This one is a bud. It will grow then when the bud is when the bud grows it and develop it will be separated into the parent cell. So that one. Uh, next we have here fragmentation. Uh, fragmentation uh, this happens when an organism is split into fragments and each fragment develops into a new organism. So even if an animal is broken into many pieces, each piece or piece will grow into a new individual. Examples are planarians as well as sponge. Uh, nidarians and bristle worms reproduce by fragmentation. Or simply fragmentation is the ability to grow but missing parts. Of course, in simple organisms such as starfish and also flatworm, they can regenerate. So that one is fragmentation. Regeneration, the more complex organism, the harder it is to regenerate. So of course, in simple organisms again, starfish and flatworm. If you cut a part of their body, it will generate regenerate so that one is regeneration example is this one okay it will grow regenerate into their body uh, we also have this one okay so that is for a sexual Reproduction. Next, let's have sexual reproduction. We have external and internal fertilization. So, sexual reproduction. A male and a female gamete is needed in order to produce an offspring. In most instances, there is a male and female organism to reproduce. The, or to produce the gametes, but this is not always the case. So, in sexual reproduction, finding a partner for sexual animals can sometimes prove difficult. So, as an adaptive mechanism and evo evolutionary solution, some animals exhibit hermaphroditism. This is when organisms as both male and female reproductive system. In one organism, it has a male and a female reproductive system. We call that one as hermaphroditism. This is common among sessile, stationary animals. In hermaphroditism, uh, the organism may or may not have a partner for fertilization to occur, but the focus in sexual reproduction, take not uh, male and female gamete is needed, okay? So, sexual reproduction, the male and female gamete will fuse during fertilization. So, a sperm and the egg unite. So, we have here a sperm and this one is the egg. The sperm and the egg unites to form zygote, which develop into an animal whose genetic information is a combination of the parent gene. So, uh, we also have here mechanisms of fertilization. There are two types of fertilization, the internal and external. So when you say internal fertilization, of course, when the fusion of gametes is inside the female body, while external fertilization is the opposite where fusion of gametes is outside the female body. So from the word internal inside external outside the female body so 
external fertilization. Uh, the union of egg and sperm occurs outside the female reproductive tract. This is common among most species of bony fish and amphibians. Example is this one. The clasping of male frog produces or the clasping of male frog induces the female to release its egg. So as you can see, we have here uh, the female frog will release eggs over the male releases his sperm. So many eggs and sperm are produced so some survive. Uh, the eggs and sperm may not meet, they may be eaten or environmental conditions may change and may lead to unfertilization of the egg. So fertilization will occur outside the reproductive tract of the female frog. Uh, take note also that most eggs of amphibians develop in water, but others carry them on their backs or in their vocal tracts. So, example is this one. Okay. Next, we have here internal fertilization. Uh, the union of egg and sperm occurs within the female reproductive tract. Animals that undergoing this type of reproduction produce offsprings in any of the following ways. We have here oviparity, oboviviparity, and viviparity. First is the oviparity. After the eggs are fertilized internally, it would complete its development outside the mother's body. The egg would receive its nourishment through its yolk. So, Anything that has an egg, that one is oviparity. So this is found in some bony and cartilaginous fish, um, reptiles, some amphibians, all birds, and a few mammals. Or we call that one as monotreme. So as you can see, we have here examples of oviparity. Birds, we have here chicken, uh, bird, uh, chicken again, roosters, etc. So those are oviparity animals. Next, we have here viviparity. The eggs are developed internally and receive nourishment directly from the mother's blood through placenta rather than from the yolk. So, in viviparity, we have here live bird. Okay, this can be found in almost all mammals, in, including human. Uh, some amphibians also so viviparity yan. okay so we have here elephant monkeys human dogs so anything that develop internally and receive nourishment from the placenta of the mother okay so next we have here obo viviparity the eggs are also fertilized internally and receive its nourishment through its yolk. However, eggs will complete its development within the mother. They are then fully developed when they are hatched and released by the mother. So, example of this one is crocodile, snake, uh, mosquito fish, some cartilaginous fish and many reptiles exhibit oboviviparity. Okay, so combination of egg and uh, flesh. Okay, so yan. Example is this one. See horses, they are born from eggs that are incubated inside their father. So, the father will intubate the baby seahorses. Then, in, after they are de fully developed, it will release by the father. So, as you can see in this one, there is a transfer of the egg from the mother going to the father. Then, the father will nourish the 
baby sweetheart so during fertilization female seahorse will transfer the egg to the male seahorse then the male seahorse will nourish the eggs and release them and release the baby seahorse when they are fully developed uh, we have here summary of features for internal and external fertilization egg under internal fertilization egg is fertilized inside the female body male gamete is discharged onto the female gamete while external we have egg is fertilized outside the female body male gamete is discharged onto the fe female gamete so yan we also have here success rate uh, under internal since the offspring is developed inside the body of the female it will have more chances of surviving even in harsh environment because it is protected by the body of uh, the female under external fertilization has less chance of survival because the offspring develop without the protection in the open environment because they are being fertilized released and nourished outside the body of the parent okay next key features internal fertilization has three types oviparity oviviparity oviviparity few offsprings are produced while external fertilization survives best in moist aquatic environment and has a greater number of offspring produced but some are not fully developed so why do you think there is a difference in types of fertilization among animals i know you have your answer on that next we have here factors that affect reproductive success uh, we have here factor number one which is predation uh, take note that the success of animal reproduction does not only end when an egg is fertilized it ends when the offspring can fully grow and even fully reproduce as well so as mentioned before the reproduction is the key to survival we will eventually die and we need to make sure that our species continue through reproduction so we have here factors that affect reproductive success first is factor number one which is predation in the animal kingdom exists a food chain at the top of the food chain there are animals we can call apex predator while at the bottom of the food chain are animals that are weak easily hunted by predators apex predators are animals that hunt and feed the other animals to survive and eventually reproduce these predators are never or rarely hunted by any other animal so on the other hand since prey is easily hunted their their offspring is always compromised and in danger the success of prey to reproduce is greatly affected by the chances that these offsprings get eaten when they are still young or developing the connection of these animals in the food chain help maintain their progeny next is the environment to ensure a healthy offspring the animal's environment must also be nurturing to the young temperature greatly affects the development and the urge of an animal to mate to the continuing rise of temperatures around the globe some animals are starting to dwindle in number and die before they even reproduce when the water becomes too warm the fishes will have a hard time getting oxygen and can eventually die exposed to warm waters for longer periods of time uh, glaciers and ice caps are melting in arctic causing polar bears to suffer health conditions due to malnutrition that's why in order for us to maintain 
a health key organism. To reproduce, we must take note that we must have a good environment. Next is human interaction. Humans have been responsible for a lot of species. Extinction as we pose as one of the greatest threat to animals. Polluting land, water, and air, hunting and deforesting are ways in which animal reproduction get disturbed. On the other hand, there are some human interventions that try to reverse these effects and attempt to save endangered species. It is important to understand that the continuity of animals is vital to the balance of ecosystem. And because there is a food chain, uh, when one animal species is threatened, the whole food chain is also threatened as well. Uh, hope you learn something. Take note, guys. Uh, when you say reproduction, in order to have a reproductive success, an organism must grow or fully grow and after that, eventually reproduce as well. So we call that one as a success of survival. Okay, so again, grow, or we should say live, grow, then reproduce. And this will be the key for uh, this quotation, reproduction is the key to survival. All organisms must reproduce. Hope you learned something. Thank you and God bless.